Hey everybody, Nicholas Ward here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Once again, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. I uh, do ask that if you like the content that I'm creating here, that you please like the videos and subscribe to the channel. Doing so will help me to continue uh, to grow this channel. Today, as you can see, we'll be talking about Home Depot. Uh, the last video that I produced was focused on Lowe's and the home improvement uh, retail space. So I wanted to also touch upon Home Depot's uh, recent quarter as well. But before I get uh, into the breakdown, I need to give my quick uh, disclaimer as usual. I am not a financial advisor and therefore I'm not offering financial advice on this channel. I am an investment analyst with Wide Moat Research. I work for the Dividend Kings, for iREIT, and for the Intelligent Dividend Investor, but I do not manage uh, client money and therefore I'm not offering advice and investors uh, watching this video need to understand to uh, do their own due diligence before uh, putting money at risk in the market. Uh, with that said, let's move over to the uh, Home Depot's uh, recent earnings here. These are actually a couple of weeks old. Home Depot reported a little bit uh, before Lowe's. Uh, however, like I said in the last video, I've been super busy this past week putting together um, the September edition of the Intelligent Dividend Investor Newsletter. Uh, I finished that up early this morning, and so now I'm trying to uh, you know, finish up my backlog of video ideas for all of the YouTube subscribers, so uh, there probably will be a little bit of a rush of videos in the coming days, but I do want to get uh, caught back up. You know, I try to produce uh, anywhere from, you know, three to four videos a week, so I need to, um, you know, go into overtime here uh, late in the week. So with that said, um, we see the Home Depot posted a great quarter. Sales were up 23.4%, as you can see here. Um, company's profits were at 24.1%. Uh, once again, anytime you're producing 20% plus growth, it is a, an amazing, uh, amazing thing. On the year to date, uh, you know, the six months of, for the first half, we're seeing 15.9 and 16% growth here. So once again, strong double digit growth, no complaints there. Uh, for the quarter, earnings per share was up 27% and 26.8%, depending on uh, if you're looking at gap or diluted figures. For the year, we're at 12.3 and 12.5, so, uh, you know, once again, uh, great results. I also, uh, quickly, I do like the fact that Home Depot is always, they've been known uh, for their share buyback, and unfortunately, we, uh, oh, and once again, we see that this is um, not unfortunate. There's nothing unfortunate about this. Uh, the share count has been reduced by uh, roughly 2%. This is a company that... Uh, you know, has made a name for itself buying back its shares over the long term. It has significantly uh, reduced its outstanding share count, which plays a large role, and it's uh, the very strong uh, earnings per share growth that we will discuss here in a moment uh, on the fast graph. But as you can see, that trend continues. And, uh, you know, as a long-term shareholder of this company, I love seeing uh, management use its strong cash flows to reduce its share count. Uh, you know, every share that the company retires means that every share that I own becomes, uh, you know, just slightly, just incrementally uh, more valuable from a supply and demand uh, standpoint. Uh, furthermore, with, uh, you know, looking at some of the uh, transaction data, we see that uh, they had 12%, 12.3% more transactions uh, year over year during the quarter. The average ticket increased from $67.31 to $74.12, so a 10% increase there. And the average uh, sales per square foot uh, in the companies uh, increased by 23.5%, showing that management is doing a great job uh, you know, with efficiencies, with merchandising, with its marketing, with everything. Uh, you know, anytime you see these strong double-digit growths, uh, you know, I, gotta, I have to give kudos to management. Uh, lastly, we will touch upon the company's uh, this asset base here and balance sheet. Um, this company generally does carry a bit, uh, it's kind of a high debt load. Um, it is. It has even used debt uh, to finance buybacks in the past, and some people don't like that, but um, yeah, I think that the company's uh, performance speaks for itself. So we do see here that the company has, uh, you know, roughly $14 billion in cash. Uh, compared to uh, long-term debt of 32 point, uh, roughly four billion. So, um, you know, it's not a terrible ratio. Uh, I think the company has a, you know, the balance sheet's fine. Uh, the dividend's not at risk. 
or anything like that. It just it is uh, worth noting that Home Depot usually does carry uh, you know a a slightly higher debt load than uh, some of its peers. So with that said, let's head over to the fast craft here. As always, valuation matters. Um, you know, we all know that Home Depot. We can take a look here real quick. This has been one of the greatest uh, dividend growth stories in recent uh, memory. As you can see, over the last decade, we're talking many, many double-digit annual increases. Uh, the strong EPS has allowed the payout ratio to kind of hover in this uh, 40 to 50 percent range. So very safe, as you can see here. Uh, the company's dividend growth CAGR is over 20%. Its average is over 21%. So um, Home Depot did freeze its dividends, you can see here, during the Great Recession. And once again, during the dot-com boom and bust uh, up here in the early 2000s. So this is a company that it doesn't have a, a very huge dividend growth streak due to its willingness to kind of freeze the dividend during recessionary periods. But it, it, it more than makes up for that with its very generous increases uh, during you know strong and healthy economies. Um, so let's head back to the fast grass. As you can see here, the stock is pretty overvalued. Uh, you know, anytime the black line is this high above the blue line, I get concerned. Uh, any when the first thing you need to look at on a fast graph when you see that happen is is the growth rates in the present and the future. Um, you know, going to exceed the historical average growth rates because if growth uh, you know picks up, then it does make sense for the premium to. Uh, expand relative to historical norms, but uh, in Home Depot's case, you know, we see 11% growth this year, 6%, 8%, and the coming years, this is much less than the strong double digit growth that we've seen from 2011 all the way up to 2019. So, uh, with that in mind, I don't think that the forward growth uh, justifies this uh, premium multiple. Shares are trading for 290, basically $292 a share right now at 291.93. This represents a 26.85 uh, times blended PE. That's well above the company's 21.37 historical um, blended PE, and it's even higher. Uh, like I said, if you watch the Lowe's video first, um, you know I don't really like paying more than 20 times for a uh, retailer. It's just the growth. You know these aren't tech companies. They they are very they are cash cows. Home Depot is a wonderful company. I own it and I plan to own it for a very long time, but. Uh, I just don't feel compelled to buy it here at nearly 27 times earnings. Um, historically speaking, I've accumulated my Home Depot uh, position down here on these dips in like the 17 to 18 times range. You can see that it is rare that these happen, but they do happen. Um, even down in the COVID low, Home Depot you know, was, was, was much lower, trading down in the 15 to 16 times range at its uh, trough there. But uh Anyway, so with that being said, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in paying 27 times. I'm not really even interested in paying the average here in the 21.3 times, uh, paying more than 20 times earnings for a company with uh, growth estimates in the high single digits, low double digits is just not, doesn't represent uh, a huge margin of safety in my opinion. Uh, I said that my fair value target, uh, personally speaking, for lows was 17 times forward earnings. And, uh, you know, that's that's a conservative estimate, but that's where I see margin of safety for Home Depot. I've historically been willing to pay a slight premium to Lowe's. Uh, Home Depot has been a better operator and they've generated uh, just better results historically, uh, you know, only slightly so. But and Lowe's, it's also important to note that Lowe's is catching up uh, under the new management. Marvin Ellison is doing a wonderful job. Uh, like I said, Lowe's is expected to grow EPS by 49 percent this year. Uh, which is a fantastic total and, uh, you know, something that Home Depot is, is not likely to going to be able to match. Uh, but it's but even with that said, Home Depot is trading at a premium to lows. And uh, I don't think that makes sense. Um, but anyway, uh, my so my fair my sort of price target for lows is 17 times forward Home Depot that it's 18 times forward. And, uh, you know, if we do 18 times 12 here, um, I, I think that's 216. But let's. Uh, I'm not a math whiz, so let's go ahead and just, uh, yeah, 216. Let's check the calculator. Um, you know, so this $216 level is kind of where I see uh, where I would like to buy shares. I'm obviously not going to hold my breath for that to happen with them up at 292 here. But as you can see, the company was trading, you know, down in the, let's, let's, let's do a quick look here. HD stock, 
it's 52 week low is, is, uh, is probably very pretty low here due to the COVID. So it traded down to $140 essentially per share. So, you know, people see the, you know, the stock here near the highs at 292 and they say, you know, Nick, you're crazy with a 216 target. Well, you know, just a few months ago, shares were at 140. So in my opinion, I'm not that crazy. Uh, I think this, this rally is a little crazy here. And, uh, you know, with that said, it, I'm, I think it's in uh, value investors' interest just to be patient and to wait for this one to come back to you. You know, if you want to pay 20 times, 21 times, somewhere in this historical of uh, earnings, I think that, you know, that's fine. As you can see here, the reliable growth that the company generates will eventually, uh, you know, generate, you know, allow you to make profits here. But as we can see here, uh, by the end of 2023, if the company hits its, uh, its its consensus growth estimates and trades at the pre at the historical multiple premium, it'll be at 276. So we're still going to be looking at negative returns. We'll go look at the forecasting to see exactly what those would be. Uh, roughly 21 times where the average is. So you're looking at, you know, with the dividend included, you know, you're looking at essentially just flat returns for the next uh, you know two and a half years. If you buy the stock here and we see mean reversion. Uh, that's not the sort of uh, performance that I'm looking for when I put capital at risk in the market. I would much rather, uh, you know, buy something with a wide margin of safety so that I get to fully participate in the company's earnings uh, generation. You know, theoretically speaking, I would want to be seeing 11% total returns this year or, you know, plus a dividend, which is in the 2%. So I'd want to see, you know, 13% returns here, 8% returns here, 10% returns here. Due to the overvaluation, that's not happening. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm just, I don't feel compelled to buy Home Depot at these levels. I do think this is a great company. I have no plans to sell my shares and it's a company that I would love to add to, uh, given the opportunity, but, um, you know, I'm just going to have to stay patient on that one. So there's my, uh, Home Depot, uh, second quarter update. The company's performance was great. I just think that the stocks, uh, rally here to this, uh, you know, 27 times multiple is, is a little crazy. Uh, to end this video, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go see the last time that the company was trading this high. If we put in the custom valuation line, it should pop up here momentarily. Oops, fast graphs is letting me down here. Oh, well, sorry about that. Anyway, let's see. Let's go ahead and look. Uh, uh, my, my, my computer screen is frozen. Oh, here we go. So, uh, you know, we see peaks here at 25.7. We see a peak here at 25 and a half, roughly. We see a peak here at 24.7 um, peak. You know, you've got to go back to basically the dot-com era to see Home Depot trading with this sort of premium. And uh, with that in mind, you know, I just, I don't think buying a stock uh, with a, you know, multi-decade high uh, valuation premium makes a lot of sense. So that's uh, my conclusion. I hope that you guys all enjoyed the video. And uh, until next time, I hope that you stay happy, hope that you stay healthy, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.